if you learn a strategy and if you take action on the strategy, you will get the outcome. And you just need to kind of believe in yourself enough to take that first step or take that first leap in order to do it. Welcome back to On The Horizon. This is Melrose Michaels. I am your host, and I'm here to share what's worked for me in building my adult creator business to try to make building yours just a little bit easier. Let's get into today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today's episode is going to focus all about my takeaways from X Biz LA and AVN. So to kick things off today, I wanted to discuss the two conferences I attended, X Biz LA and AVN Las Vegas. As most of you who follow us know, we did our first ever in-person sex work CEO workshop. And not to brag, but I do feel super good about how this went. And overall, I feel it was a huge success. So just to give you an idea of how the workshop went and what went on inside of it, I'll go over here briefly. At these conferences, in case you've never been, what you typically experience sitting in on the conferences or the panels or seminars is that you'll hear other creators or professionals talk about their shared experiences, how they overcame challenges and obstacles that they faced, basically their perspective on the industry as a whole. But something I've never seen done is kind of like an interactive workshop. And in my opinion, as a performer or creator, I wanted to build something like that, something again that I wish I've had. I guess that's always been the premise of what we've done here at Sexwork CEO to begin with, right? And with that in mind, I decided to approach our first ever workshop kind of the same way. I wanted to have something that was interactive so that when creators attended it, they actually left with more than just information in terms of value. I wanted them to actually leave the workshop having made money from attending the workshop. So I've talked to you guys in the past at length about how important I need you to know your time is. And I want you to understand how valuable a resource it is to you. So that being said, if you came to our workshop or talk that I was going to be giving, I wanted to make sure it made you money because you should be paid for your time. And the fact that you're willing and comfortable to even consider giving me some of your time really means a lot to me. So I wanted to honor that by making sure that you left with value, not only informationally, but actually like physical monetary value. So what I did with this workshop is I kind of had a three-pronged approach. I wanted it to be mixed with strategy and information, the actual implementation of what I taught, and then I kind of wanted this like inspirational, motivational takeaway. The strategy essentially taught you how to create a hook, tell a story, and then monetize it. And that's a strategy that I've talked about in the past. It's something we've spoken at length about. It's something I've given you step-by-step, you know, instructions on how to do. But it's not something that I've ever handheld creators through in terms of the execution of it. So I spoke on that strategy and I went into detail, but as I was teaching it, I was having creators in the workshop actually take the steps to do it. That's the part that made me so nervous because that's intimidating. And you guys showed up and you fucking crushed it. So props to you. And by the end of the workshop, creators in the room were standing because they had made money. To back up a little bit, we talked about a strategy We had you create content in real time and implement the strategy. And then we asked you to stand up in the workshop if you got an unlock and if you made money off of what we just taught you. And at the end of the workshop, creators were standing. And the whole premise and overarching kind of story and theme for this workshop was that if you learn a strategy and if you take action on the strategy, you will get the outcome. And you just need to kind of believe in yourself enough to take that first step or take that first leap in order to do it. And that was what was demonstrated with the workshop. And I felt really effectively. And I've got to say, I have probably never worked so hard or prepared so thoroughly for any kind of live speech or live presentation like this one. So the fact that it all came together was really remarkable, not just from what you guys have told me, but it was remarkable for me because I didn't really know if it would. I knew the strategy was solid and I knew that if you guys executed, it would come through for you. I had no concerns about that. But what I didn't know was the variables that I couldn't account for. Like, for example, this workshop was on a Tuesday at 1 p.m. PST and I had no way 
of knowing if your fans would be online at that time. And that likelihood is kind of low. It's not exactly peak hours for adult platforms. Also, I just couldn't account for if you guys would participate and actually follow along with me. These were huge gambles and huge bets that I was placing. And man, <laughs> CEO Squad, you fucking came through and delivered. And that was such an impactful moment because it means that you support me just as much as I'm trying to support you guys. So thank you wholeheartedly for that. If you're enjoying this podcast episode so far, please take one moment to share it with another one of your adult content creator friends because you know what the rule is here. We do not gatekeep and we want to make as many adult creators' businesses as easy as possible. And you sharing this episode with them might do exactly that. Thanks so much in advance. The next thing I want to speak to you is kind of the rest of XBiz as a whole. There were a lot of great seminars and I was lucky to be a part of a few of them. The panel that I sat on with Corey Silverstein to talk about exit strategy in the industry felt like a really important one because a lot of creators and performers go into the space without having an exit plan in place. So the ability to focus on that and kind of dedicate time to it was phenomenal. And I think Corey brought me on for this panel specifically because I'm trying to help creators and performers understand that content is an asset, that you can actually exit your adult creator business for some money and you can sell your business once you decide to leave this space. But in order to do that, you actually have to truly prepare and kind of get your ducks in a row along the way. The importance of this is not just in having, you know, your documents and your paperwork, which me, Corey, Larry, and Ali Knox spoke about in depth, but we also discussed kind of how to organize those things, how to even incorporate an affiliate business alongside your library of content so that you have a little bit more enterprise value if and when you go to sell it. These are concepts a lot of creators and performers don't really spend a lot of time thinking about. And this is why we actually brought on Fans Revenue as a sponsor to begin with, which to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure if the CEO squad has grasped kind of the significance of. The reality that you can spend a decade creating a library of content and then sell it to a company or studio at the end of your career, that is just one way to exit this industry. While a secondary stream of revenue or way to exit this industry is with an affiliate business. You know, you're making money off of your audience, even if you're no longer creating or streaming or performing. That's a sellable asset too. And you can hold on to it, you can cash flow it, or you can sell it. Because affiliate businesses is something that will go on to pay residuals for a lifetime if you build it right, that's what makes it so important for our space in that we are kind of almost like athletes. You know, we do physical work, we do physical labor. Performing, being live on cam, doing phone sex, sexting, any of those things, they're all physical acts to us and on our bodies. So just like an athlete, we tend to have a limited number of years in this space, whether that be because of our image, because of age, because of choice, because of, you know, pursuing other opportunities. We have to keep in mind that there is an exit and we have an endpoint or an evolution where we evolve into some, you know, adjacent space. I mean, long-term sex for CEO is a vast part and component to my own personal exit strategy so that I can still be in the adult space, even though it's in an adjacent way. So I really loved sitting on that panel and contributing to that panel. It's always really nice to sit next to huge impactful players in our space, such as Ali Knox, Corey, Larry Wallace. They all give creators such tremendous value. So that was a huge highlight for me. Another thing that went down at Expos LA was that ILO or ALO, which you probably know better as Pornhub, held talks that we were able to attend. And while I can't go into every detail as it was, you know, a long talk, I will say that my own impressions, as well as other creators that I spoke to at Expos, had really, really positive sentiment around what ALO had to say. Essentially, it was the first discourse the new owners and team at Pornhub had with creators directly. And the overarching messaging was like, look, this platform has failed you in the past and it has made mistakes and we are coming in here with the intention of correcting that. Majority of the creators I spoke to that attended the ALO seminar felt really good about what they had to say and are genuinely looking forward to seeing what ALO will do with that platform. So as far as that goes, the future looks bright and time will tell. Some of the other things that I really loved about uh, the Expos workshop was, of course, the ability to network. If you've ever been to Exos LA, you probably know that networking in the lobby of the Kimpton Hotel is where a ton of deals get made. It's where a ton of opportunity lies and meeting other people and figuring out how you can benefit their business or them you. And it's where a lot of collabs are organized for the first time. So watching creators take part in that 
and watching platform owners and company owners take part in that was phenomenal as well. At this event and expo specifically, I encountered a handful of people that I was really inspired by and look forward to incorporating into, you know, sex work CEO at some point in the future. Obviously, we have limited resources at the moment, but when I think about expanding my team and having to hire internally for this company, there was people that I met at Expos LA that I know would make fantastic contributions to the mission that we have here. So I'm definitely building a hit list of extremely valuable creators, performers, and just people in general that I met at this month's conferences. If you're not attending these kinds of things, things that you should be aware of and kind of things you're missing out on are what we just described. Because unfortunately, there is an effort to expand and grow your business, and it is going to come down to the relationships that you have whether that be for collaborations on content or whether that be, you know, in brand deals or brand ambassadorships with other companies or even building out adjacent components to your business. Maybe you want to launch a platform or maybe you want to launch a company. Maybe you want to partner with someone who has the development and the dev team to help bring your vision to fruition. And a lot of these conversations get held at Expos. So overall, Expos LA was phenomenal. And then also the final and probably biggest thing that I want to mention from Expos LA was that Emma Rose got to host the awards, which is the first of its kind to ever have a trans performer hosting an industry award show. And it's long overdue to platform hugely important and hugely marginalized cornerstones of our industry. But it was amazing to see and to be in attendance of that historical moment. Change in progress is always long overdue, but when it happens, I do believe it should be celebrated. So that was absolutely fantastic. So AVN Expo in Las Vegas. I had never been to an AVN before. <laughs> I believe I went to Vegas during AVNs before, but I didn't actually attend or exhibit. So I was just kind of in the area at the same time. And for me personally, that experience was not actually a great one. It was kind of negative. So I had never gone back and I had never tried to experience AVN since. And in retrospect, that was a huge, huge regret of mine and a huge loss to me because I know the show this year wasn't as big as it has been in years past. So I do definitely feel like I missed out on that. So I was kind of making this effort again and stepping outside my own comfort zone to be in attendance. I went to AVN kind of with the intention of only being at the booth and exhibiting one day to meet and greet with fans for the sole purpose that I wanted the freedom to like move around the expo however I felt like so that I could experience it as well since I would be experiencing it truly for the first time. As I was walking the show floor, I was kind of hopping in booths, saying hi to creators, company owners, platforms. And I was kind of just, you know, getting a feel for the value creators could get out of AVN as well as the value exhibitors like companies and platforms could get out of AVN. And some of the things that stood out to me was one, obviously this is a B2C event. So it's geared towards fans and audience in terms of them coming to meet the creators that they love, creators that they follow, celebrities that they essentially support. So knowing that, it was really cool to see how that transfers from online to in person. So one of the things you notice when you're walking around the avian floor is that huge studios and production companies like Brazzers, for example, will have lines wrapped around the booth of excited fans looking forward to meet their favorite creators and performers. So this is totally to be expected, right? This is what I had, you know, anticipated seeing. Now, when I actually went to exhibit at my booth, I was at the Motor Bunny booth and I love Motor Bunny, love their team. If you don't know them, I'm happy making an intro. Phenomenal people. And I can't say enough good things about them. So having creators and fans kind of stop by and say hi, of course, that was awesome. I especially love when creators come by to say hello and you guys tell me how you've been impacted by the stuff that we do. Because when you guys stop me to tell me how I've impacted you or how I've helped you, or even just for like a picture and all of that kind of stuff, that's when it really hits home for sex work CEO that we're making an actual difference. And like, that's when it feels real to me. Not to mention a lot of the time <laughs> I'm having conversations with like big platform owners or company owners. And then you guys interrupt to say something positive of, about sex work CEO. That's my fucking favorite. <laughs> it's literally you guys showing in real time how valuable sex work CEO can be to these potential companies or potential sponsors. So yeah, please do more of that. I'm happily you know, there to be interrupted all day by creators. You guys are my priority and it's my absolute favorite fucking thing. <laughs> Sometimes on social media, it, just, it doesn't feel as real, you know, because it's social media. It's not in person, but when it, it really drives the point home is when you guys take those moments to do that. I really appreciate it. And it's hugely beneficial and it moves me at a level that's honestly hard to describe. So 
Now, the other component to AVN that I think needs to be touched on is similar to the lobby of the Kimpton Hotel for Expos LA, there is a lot of business networking and a lot of deals that get made at the Crystal Bar inside Resorts World, which is kind of like the bar at the center of the casino at AVN. It's where you're going to find a lot of the biggest players and adults in terms of platform owners and companies. And occasionally you'll see some adult stars there as well, but that was a lot more rare. It did seem like creators weren't showing up there as often. I think the creators and performers were more focused on the AVN events as well as the nightlight, you know, parties and stuff, which makes sense, right? Because that's what you're there in attendance for. That's where your fans are going to see you. So that absolutely makes sense. But for me, being at the Crystal Bar was a massively beneficial component to AVN for me. I often find that, again, the conversations had in terms of networking are the most valuable part for me in attending any expos or conferences. So that is what I try to, you know, leave the most time and flexibility for personally. So if you're ever like, if you've ever reached out to me um, about like meeting or having a conversation in person at these expos, and I didn't give you a commitment for a meeting, or I didn't give you a commitment for a time to talk, please don't ever think that that means you can't stop me if you see me. <laughs> um, if you see me at these events, absolutely stop me. We can always have any conversation you guys like. Just know that you're always free to pin me down and chat. I just have trouble making actual commitments because I want to be able to capitalize on that moment when someone walks past or I get introduced to someone that I really wanted to meet or make a connection with. So again, it doesn't mean we can't chat and talk and meet and you know have in-depth conversations. We absolutely can. I just don't want to like set a time and place for it. I want it to be organic. So if you see me, feel free to stop me. Last but not least, as we kind of move towards the end of the half hour here, I want to take a quick second to discuss the upcoming events that I'm going to be attending as far as expos go. So the next event on my personal schedule is TES Affiliate Summit in Lisbon, Portugal at the end of February. This is an affiliate event that deals with traffic and platforms and products that have to do with, yeah, traffic, but are usually in the adult space, the dating space, or even the gambling space. It's a lot broader than just our industry. However, I got so much value out of attending TES in Prague last September after Expos Amsterdam that I decided to attend it this February as well. So I will keep you posted, you know, on what kind of value I get out of that summit. As always, if you weren't able to attend Expos or AVN, at least you hopefully got some value out of this episode as I kind of want to find a way to bring these events back to you because obviously not every creator has the capacity or has the resources to attend these sort of things. And, you know, it's my promise to continue to do that as best as we can as we go forward. Again, thank you everyone who was at the shows for your support of Sex Work CEO. And thank you everyone who continues to tune in and follow our stuff because the impact you have on us is matched by the impact you say we have on you. And as you show up for us, that's how we can keep doing the stuff that we're doing. Without you, there just is no us. Speaking of that, I do want to point out, we put out a tweet regarding this idea that we've been playing around with about starting a closed community for our creators, for you, the CEO squad. So we just like you are always worried about getting deplatformed. You know, we've already lost our TikTok twice. We lost our Reddit um, once already. So we are experiencing those things just like every other creator in our space, even though we're educational based, even though we don't post explicit content in any way. Um, and we're also worried about the same things you are in terms of shadow banning, search bans, and our reach and our exposure, right? Um, we've noticed on our Twitter, we've encountered kind of this content exposure limit, probably because the circle of people we interact with are creators who do post explicit stuff. So based on kind of the code and the back end to what we understand about X or Twitter, it would make sense that we are now getting limited ourselves as well. But our goal is if we can move our creator audience or shift our creator audience somewhere else, that they can get fully transparent access, you know, to our stuff, to our education, to courses, to everything, that's going to become a higher and higher priority to us. So with more and more requests for access to me personally from the CEO squad, I really need to find a place where it makes sense for us to do that. So just know we're actively working on what that community is going to look like. It is going to have an app. For it. I want you guys to be able to use an app to access this from your phone. I want it to be convenient for y'all. Um, and we will be announcing it fairly soon. We all know that Stripper Web was a massive loss for our community. And I really like to rebuild something out like that, but in a impactful business component sort of way for you guys. So if you want to be personally invited to that community when it launches, please comment so that we can send you a personal invite uh, directly to you because we'd like you to be a part of it. Again, you guys are what makes 
the whole sex work CEO ecosystem makes sense and work. So we need to have you guys part of that. As many of you have seen, we began putting out new creator content and educational content on our YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to our YouTube, please do so over at youtube.com forward slash SWCEO and make sure you have our notifications on so that you never miss a new course. Our recent video called Unlocking Slushies Advertising Power Strategies and Results Revealed has gotten a ton of feedback. If you're tired of shout outs that don't convert like me, then Slushies on platform ads may be something you want to consider adding to your advertising budget. In that video, I talk about why I think running paid ads can be a game changer for adult creators and how Slushies self-serve ads work and what happened when I ran my own Slushy app. It's always a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our Telegram bot already. If you haven't already heard, we did release a Telegram bot that essentially sends you your daily adult content inspiration with all the captions that you need for your feed, PPV left messages, clip stores, et cetera. The ideas are researched to be trendy or highly desirable from what fans are currently seeking, and the captions are optimized with calls to action to make sure that you increase your earning and unlock potential with each one. Telegram bot pushes your daily dose of inspiration to your phone every day around 10 a.m. Central Standard so that you no longer have to waste your time researching, planning, or coming up with content ideas or captions. The bot takes care of all of that. If you're not an active Telegram user or would prefer the PDF versions of the content and slow captions, you can now get that over on sexworkceo.com forward slash shop. We recently launched our store website with PDF downloads of the same content and spot and captions featured on our Telegram bot. We also have additional downloads available there, like the unlock sales scripts and sales objection scripts for you to help close the deals with your fans and PPVs. If you want to get a taste of what we offer without spending a single penny, there's absolutely completely free PDF downloads available there for you as well. There's a 15 free solo content ideas and captions available there. There's also a scene planner that will help you plan the content you want to create available for free download. So just head over to sexworkceo.com forward slash shop after this episode in case you're interested. I want to take this final opportunity one last time to remind you all listening about SWR Data, my other company, in case you're not familiar. SWR Data is on a mission to survey adult creators like you. We want to hear your feedback. We want to hear about the challenges you face and how the adult industry can better serve your needs. Our goal is to collect experiences, opinions, and observations about the current state of the industry, and then use that data to advocate for the necessary changes to make it a better place for us, the creators. Reality is a lot of people in power have never been creators and do not know what our needs are. And SWR data is gonna be that lens. However, you can't do it alone. For that reason, we are inviting any creators willing to participate in our qualifying survey to help us understand your expertise as an adult creator. By taking that survey, you can then start participating in future paid surveys with our aim being that the CEO squad can have an additional stream of revenue through SWR data's surveys alone. Your experience as a creator is valuable and we think it's time we got paid for it. Comment to let us know you're interested so that we can DM you the qualifying survey link and you can join us on this mission. All right, it looks like we've got Primal Daddy. Let me add you as a speaker. All right, you have the, you have the floor. Hi, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. First off, thank you for hosting this space and sharing your brilliant juices with everybody. I'm taking my time to absorb it all in. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, so I had a question earlier, but it slipped in my mind. So the one that's lingering right now is, do you have any advice? Because I have a few clients and I am trying to establish my business, but work-wise, everything else, et cetera, et cetera, it's kind of conflicting when I am working. And, you know, being a full-time sex worker is, is good. It's fun. I love money. So being a dominant, I want to do everything because I have a set goal in mind. But do you have any advice for a dominant who has several clients that he's trying to assist, assist and also a main sub that, well, just a, a dominant, I'm just going to, a dominant who is trying to work with a lot of clients. Do you have any advice for that? So when you say a dominant, you're doing in-person dom work. Is that correct? In person and also I'm in school, so keep things simple. Um, I'm aiming to be a bureaucratic admin. So I dom, I dom through cyber and I also dom in person. Okay. And so you're looking for more of like advice on how to balance the work because it sounds like you're in school and kind of doing these other things and then you have maybe a an other career as well at the moment right yes please okay so i think i think this idea of balance and this is me speaking from my my personal lens and opinion and this might 
kind of be contrary. Also, if there's another Dom listening who maybe has gone through this experience, I would love it if you could request to come up and speak as well because you can share a better lens on the Dom aspect specifically. But for me, balancing business when you're transitioning into a career in sex work or creation or in-person Dom work kind of stuff, in-person sex work, it comes down to what the capacity is and what you're capable of. And it's going to be really different for each person. You know, like when I first got into um, live camming, when I first got into adult, I still had a lead stream job that was very corporate. And until I felt a sense of security with my sex work career, I couldn't make that switch and quit the full time, which I'm sure is going to be similar to your experience as well. I think in terms of balance, it comes down to the segmenting and time blocking your schedule. So you have the set amount of time that's dedicated to what you're doing now, your corporate life, your school, and then you have the set time block and area of time and aspect that's dedicated to pursuing and building your sex work business or your adult business. So making sure that you actually time block for it and the bigger component, in my opinion, making sure that if you have a set time to do something that you follow through and execute during that time. Because I can't tell you as me just being an entrepreneur and being an ambitious person like how many times i've gone through my google calendar and i've set time blocks for like you know 8 a.m to 10 a.m admin work clerical work scheduling posts scheduling content and then 10 a.m to 3 p.m making content or whatever the time blocks are and it looks really great on your calendar but if you're not doing it (laughs) you're not doing anything so where i've struggled in the past is just the execution of like doing what i said i was going to do and i think that is The biggest challenge for most creators, most, you know, full service sex workers in terms of in-person work is just like the follow through and the execution because it's great to make plans, but without any action, like you're just not going to see the results and the outcomes that you want. And it takes time to do it regardless. So even if you're imperfect at showing up for yourself for whatever you're time blocking for, making that effort to progress and to start showing up more and more each day and doing those things and chipping away at those tasks that's where you're going to start to see your business move along and your business start to grow. So I I guess the short of it is showing up for yourself. But this idea of like balance, that's a hard one to to discuss because I don't consider myself a balanced person. Um, I don't, it's not even something I I strive for, to be honest. Uh, I find a lot of joy and like fulfillment in my work. And because I enjoy it, I don't want to balance it. I kind of want as much as I can possibly take on because I enjoy it. So that's not like, advice that I'd give someone else is to like throw yourself into work. I think people need to know themselves personally and have a self-awareness of what is balance and what feels good to them. Balance for me is, you know, my foot on the throttle, but that's not going to be applicable to everyone, nor should it be. Like, I don't necessarily consider how I am healthy. It's just what I enjoy. So it's what I do. But yeah, time block and then execute on those time blocks. I think that's when you're going to see the the best results and the best outcomes. Thank you. So one last thing. This is, this is the, um, with Telegram and mm-hmm. doing different groups, et cetera, et cetera. I personally, I focused on my following counts. I tried to do more interactions, things of that nature. When I do handle work for clients, that's the main thing because I have different accounts. I have their accounts. I have several phones and then I sit in front of my computer. Sometimes I have a paper to do, et cetera, et cetera. Then I have people trying to purchase content for other people. And, you know, that's why sometimes it gets really hectic because it's like I cannot portray this. And, oh, my God, I think I'll fit, like time block, time block, time block, time block. That was one key um key component that you shared with me. Time block. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. And also, too, when you're it sounds like you're managing, um, maybe maybe assisting and managing for other creators. Um, something you mentioned being Telegram. I don't know if a lot of creators know this, but you can actually have multiple Telegram accounts on one phone. If you're dealing with Telegram or you're dealing with Telegram groups, uh, I know those Telegram groups will blow up your your notifications. So a lot of us have them just sitting on mute until we need to go in and like hunt something down. But you can have like what I've done is like I have a personal Telegram, which is you know the the Telegram account that I use to to work with my team internally and to facilitate conversations that need my absolute most attention. And then I have a secondary Telegram account that's like outward facing, fan facing the one that comes up when people search so that if they want to reach out to me, they can. So you can have multiple Telegram accounts. Um, so just a little bit of like pro tip. I know a lot of creators don't know that. I just recently found that out. Maybe I'm behind. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps too. But definitely time block and know that like 
this isn't going to be perfect, you know, as creators with what we do, and especially if you're managing other creators and, and, and sales and stuff for them, you're going to be constantly interrupted in and throughout your day with like, oh, now my attention needs to be here. Oh, now my attention needs to be here. What I've started to try to do is like when those things come up, instead of tackling them, then not like in real time in the moment, I will like write it down or I'll write it in my Asana board, which is the CRM for task management that I personally use. And I'll put it in like a later pile so that because there's a huge loss of mental focus and mental capacity when you switch tasks. Um, this is why people talk about multitasking as being really ineffective. Even if you think you're good at it, you're losing speed and you're losing flow state whenever you switch tasks. So when those things come up, it's kind of like grab that thing that you need to get to later, put it in a later list or in a later pile or a later bucket, and then refocus on the thing you're doing in the moment. And then when your next time block comes up, you can adjust and revisit those later items. But trying in in finding ways to not let your flow be interrupted and your time block be interrupted will actually help you be more productive and move you forward. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so I guess lastly, um, an important, most importantly, since there's no more speakers requested to come up, is to emphasize that all the information we put out here on Sexwork CEO, we do so for free because we do believe in this idea that the more financially successful creators are, the more resources we'll have as a community to do things like lobby Congress, impact policy, organize, and more. So if you find value in the content you heard here today or in the tweets that you've engaged with, please, please consider sharing it with your followers and other creator friends to make this journey easier for them. Our only ask is that you retweet and share our stuff so that we can help as many people as humanly possible. That brings us to the end of today's space. Huge thank you for everyone who tuned in and for Primal for coming up and contributing. You had great questions. Hopefully you got some great value. Remember all these spaces are tuned into blog posts and available over on sexworkceo.com. So just head over there to our blog to revisit any of these ideas later in the week. Our next space is going to be about how to gamify your adult business with your fans. So thank you again for joining me today, CEO Squad, and I will see you all one week from now. It would be absolutely incredible if you rated this podcast five stars and left a little review. We want to get this podcast to as many adult creators as possible, and you taking a second to leave a couple stars and a review really helps us do that. Thanks so much.